In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this nanocube terrarium and even how it looks after two months of growth. This is a 20 centimeter cube aquarium and I'll be using this for today's terrarium build. It's already got a self-leveling mat on the bottom, which is great. I'm gonna start with the drainage layer. Also known as the false bottom, this is the place for excess water to sit instead of it sitting in the substrate. For this terrarium, I'm gonna be using Lika. It's very lightweight and porous, which makes it perfect for drainage. After pouring some in, I'm using my hand to gently flatten it out to make sure there's no high or low points. For a terrarium this size, you really don't need too much. With the drainage in, it's time for the substrate barrier. This will sit on top of the drainage layer and prevent the substrate from getting through. The material I always like to use is window screen mesh. I'll put a link to it in the description, plus most of the other materials I'll be using too. With that in place, it's now time for the substrate. I'm using my usual terrarium substrate mix, which I'll put up on screen now. All the components come together to make the perfect substrate for a long lasting, healthy terrarium. To start off, I'm only placing in a thin layer so I can start working on the hardscape. I'm using the back of my hand to spread it out and gently pat it down into place. With that in, let's start talking about the hardscape. I want to create a twisting path with rocks either side that leads up to the back. To do this properly, I'm going to use a tip that I learned from aquascaping. I'm taking a post-it note, cutting a small square out and then sticking it to the back of the tank. This will serve as the end point for the twisting path. This will stay there throughout the build and it will help me ensure that I don't block out the end point with hardscape or plants. Talking about hardscape, here's what I'll be using. These are black lava rocks. I even have a few that came out the previous scape inside this tank which have some nice moss and liverworts growing on them. However, a few of them do have some old glue marks on them but I'll show you how easy it is to get off. I simply take some pliers and break these pieces off and then the rock is pretty much as good as new. Now I'm going to start placing the rocks inside the terrarium. At this point, I'm constantly checking the front viewing angle of the terrarium to make sure I'm not blocking out the end point. As I build the hardscape, I'm continuing to add more substrate to build more height. This will help create a better sense of depth and will make the terrarium look deeper than it actually is. If you're a long viewer of the channel, you might remember this scape here. I had a problem with the light this tank was under and it caused the plants and moss to really suffer. This was a shame as it was one of my favorite tanks that I've made. I'm bringing this up because I took that tank down and I'm going to be using some of the rocks and plants from that tank for this scape here. I want to try and recreate that scape but with a few twists here and there. Here's the final layout of the rocks. I'm really happy with it but it definitely needs some wood. This is spider wood and I think it will be perfect for this scape. It did take me some time to find a layout I was happy with but that's all part of the hardscape process. Here's the final hardscape. I ended up using three pieces of spiderwood that intertwine throughout the scape. As you can see, I made sure that the end point is still visible. Now I'm gonna glue the wood down using the super glue and tissue method. I simply wedge a small piece of tissue between the wood and rock and then soak it in super glue. It dries quickly and is 100% plant safe. Now all the hardscapes locked in place, I'm gonna add a little more substrate to the back to build some more height. I did this on both sides of the terrarium. With that done, it's finally time to move on to the plants. I'm going to start off with this Boston fern. After taking it out of the pot and removing all the substrate, I'm splitting it up into multiple pieces. This is very easy to do and is a great way to get multiple small plants from a single plant. I'm going to be planting these in the back corners of the terrarium. I use some long tweezers to dig a hole into the substrate and then take the roots of the fern and plant it inside. I'm also going to plant another one over on the other side too. I followed the same process as before. I really like how these ferns fill out the back of the scape. With the Boston ferns in, I'm now going to plant these asparagus ferns. They have these beautiful delicate leaves which are great at resembling trees inside a terrarium. I planted them the same way I did with the Boston ferns. When it comes to choosing which plants to use, I always recommend choosing a variety of different leaf shapes and textures for the most natural looking terrarium. Sticking with ferns, next I'll be planting this tricolour fern. Once mature, this beautiful fern will have leaves in shades of red, green and bronze. Now I want a carpeting plant to grow and fill out the central path of the terrarium. Before planting it, I'm going to pour in a fine layer of aqua soil down the centre. 
You certainly don't have to do this, but I think it will be beneficial for the plant that I want to use as it drains really well and holds a good amount of nutrients. The plant I'm going to use down the centre is this Monte Carlo. It's an aquatic plant that also grows great in terrariums so long as the humidity is kept high. I mostly planted it down the centre but also in a couple other locations throughout the terrarium. These are some of the plants I managed to save from the previous scape inside this tank. There's a variety of different plants including some Anubias, Bucephalandra, some moss and some other species too. Some of them aren't in the best shape but I'm hoping that they'll recover and grow inside this tank. I'm placing the Anubias and Boos in various locations around the terrarium. These plants are epiphytes. This means they should not be planted into the substrate. Instead, wedge them in gaps and cracks around the scape. If their rhizomes were to be planted into the substrate, they'll quickly rot and die. Now that most of the plants are in, this terrarium is really starting to come together. I love the variety of different shapes, colours and textures that all the plants provide. Next, I want to plant some moss in the foreground of the terrarium. I'm going to start off with a few moss covered rocks from the previous setup. Most of them have a mix of Christmas moss and coral moss, which is actually a liverwort. Next I'm going to plant some java moss. Although this moss grows much faster than Christmas moss, it does tend to grow vertically rather than horizontally. Before planting it, I'm taking some scissors and chopping it down into small pieces. This will help you cover a larger area with less moss and it will also help stimulate new growth. I'm simply placing it in the foreground on top of the substrate and then gently pressing it down. I also went on to plant the moss in a few different areas around the terrarium. Next I'm going to plant these small cuttings of ficus quercifolia. I'm planting these up against the lava rocks. I'm hoping they'll slowly creep and grow over them. This terrarium wouldn't be complete without some springtails. They'll eat mould and decaying matter throughout the terrarium. This is even more important in this terrarium as I used a good amount of spiderwood which is prone to growing mould. Their population will self-regulate depending on available food so you've never got to worry about them overpopulating the terrarium. Now I'm going to take a small spray bottle and give the terrarium a good spray down. Keep in mind that it's very important not to overwater and only water until the substrate is damp but not wet. The terrarium looks exactly how I wanted and I love how the path turned out. But how will it look in two months time? Let's find out. Two months later and the terrarium is thriving. It's been sitting under some LED lights and I've given it a very light spray once a week. All the moss and plants have been growing in really well. As you can see the java moss has grown quite vertically like I said. I quite like how it looks at the moment but if you wanted it to grow more low and horizontally giving it a trim will help it do this. This beautiful miniature plant has sprouted up out of nowhere. If you think you know what it is please let me know in the comments. All the Anubias and Bucephalandras have been recovering and growing really well. And when turning the tank to the side you can get a glimpse of the healthy new root growth. The springtails have been hard at work keeping this terrarium clean and as a result I've seen very minimal mould problems. All three fern species have been growing in really well and they've all sent out new growth which is great to see. This stunning begonia has also been growing really well and it's got these beautiful iridescent leaves. The Monte Carlo down the centre has done a good job at carpeting for the most part, which is just what I wanted. Overall, I'm really happy with how this nano cube terrarium turned out. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this build, please let me know in the comments.